And now, we join Chaz Marler's most recent existential crisis, already in progress. I recently had some very prestigious taxidermists over to my house for game night. They came over and scanned my game shelf in search of a game that they would like to play. And then, after minutes and minutes of the kind of deep concentration that can only result from years of carefully sewing bobcat pelts into evocative poses, they came to a decision and requested to play Pickpocket. A game that I don't actually have in my collection. But before I could bring myself to inform them of this fact, inevitably breaking their hearts, you know, hearts that have most assuredly long since grown cold and brittle from years of formaldehyde exposure, I had an epiphany. I didn't own a copy of the game, but I have played it before, and I know the rules from memory. You see, this is a game that includes a deck of 52 cards, which could, theoretically, be replaced by a deck of regular playing cards. Sure, playing this way would require cross-referencing the cards, but it would certainly be possible. And then uh, I thought the game's meeples could easily be replaced with the meeples from another game that I have. And then, as far as replicating the game's dice, well, I have plenty of dice. And it's sand timers? Check! Pencil and paper? Pfft, no problem. Paper money? I have more paper money than I know what to do with. Sponges? Who doesn't have several spare sponges just laying around? And before I knew it, I had assembled enough components to completely recreate this game from scratch. But then a thought hit me harder than a stuffed guinea pig thrown across the room in an attempt to get your attention that dinner is cold and your guests are leaving. I couldn't help but wonder, did I just pirate a copy of this game? I mean, on one hand, I thought, yeah, because I had just assembled an unauthorized replication of the game with the express purpose of playing it. But then, on the other hand, isn't a board game more than just a simple collection of its components? And, and you know, ever since that night, I, I have continued to ponder not only where my Dalmatian has disappeared to, but also the answer to the question of just what part of a board game is the game? Uh, are a game's rules its fundamental element and its components inconsequential? Or is the game a sum of its parts, a variety of different pieces that all come together into one package that's greater than, and, and a different product than, any of its individual pieces? Well, I don't know, which I guess is why I'm asking you, because the this is what I do. So let me know what you think about this in the comments below, because really, I either have a weekend full of homemade gaming or a weekend full of deleting downloaded PDF rulebooks ahead of me. I recently had some very prestigious anchovy farmers over for a gaming night. Some very prestigious used coat rack salesmen over. Very prestigious chainsaw pull string repairmen over. Walrus groomers. Aphid farmers. Vintage television antenna enthusiasts. Some very prestigious disgruntled cartography theorists. No, that one doesn't even make sense. That, that, that's silly. Who, who in their right mind would get upset about what someone has to say about cartography guidelines? No, no I gotta come up with something different because that, that, one, that one's not even believable.